Hey, so yeah, you probably heard me say, uh, if you've been watching a little while, that I do recommend a certain situation where you reach out to your congressperson if something is awry with your SSD, SSI, or uh, Social Security retirement case under certain circumstances. So I want to tell you, I want to get to when you shouldn't be doing it. And I bring this up because a client of mine was wondering if uh, that is something that should be done. And it, th there's nothing awry with the case. It's being worked on by the medical review office at the state agency that's outsourced by the feds. So there's nothing awry. So I'll get to that in a second. The situations where it is appropriate, and I encourage people, uh, myself included, to reach out to my congressperson when there is a cog in the wheel of any federal agency that's there to provide a service. A cog in the wheel. That means a something is caught up and stopped and you're not getting a live body by reaching out to them yourself to get it unstopped. When it's stuck, it's missing in action, that kind of thing. Maybe you won your case and you haven't seen your back benefits. Um, and you've waited and let them do their very slow little business at the payment center, which is very slow right now. <laughs> um, in that instance, I would reach out. It, you know, if you've gone a couple months and there's been no headway, and particularly if you're not getting responses when you send letters or leave messages or you can't get through on the phone. For a cog in the wheel, for a procedural glitch, not for anything of merit or substance. So if you want, if you think you're going to contact your congressperson um, to have them, you know, give it the what for to the medical office that better find you disabled, that is not going to happen. That would be completely inappropriate. They do their job uninfluenced by a politician, in theory. And they're certainly not going to, um, your congressman isn't going to do that for you. Uh, the, the medical office has got to get it done themselves by following the rules okay i mean remember if they if they were to make a decision that was not substantiated it would get overturned in all likelihood so or eventually because then you're gonna have a cdr but so when you have a cog in the wheel something is stopped it's not moving the the, the wagon's not going anywhere and it's been a long time and you're not getting a response from the social security if they say well we're still working on it at medical or we're waiting on an adjudicator. God knows it's been like six months. Some people are waiting for an adjudicator, perhaps even longer. I've heard, I've heard like, I think I've seen like close to a year. Um, if you know that's what's going on, then bugging them isn't gonna suddenly create more adjudicators that can take your case, right? That's a staffing issue. Um, you can write to your congressperson and encourage them to have proper funding for social security. Assuming that the problem is congressional funding, not, you know, something else on the interior. So I'm not going to go into one way or the other with that. But you, you, do, you do not ask your congressperson to um, make them look at your medical records in a certain way, um, take your case seriously, um, you know, recognize that you must be disabled, you wouldn't have been applying, or, you know, anything that has to do with substance. It's, it's only about technical glitches because they can light a match that will be felt. You know, sometimes we send letters and we get someone who feels it. But when even we are writing letters and faxing and calling and we're not getting, we can't even get through and we can't get a live body who knows anything about where the case is at, then indeed it is time to, um, you know, get the, get the big guys in there. So, but do not, I would say, ever ask your congressperson to, you know, put the finger on the scale or to interfere with the medical review process um, to pressure somebody to award you. Um, you know, I know we're dealing with what we, you know, many of us considered a, a lot of corruption up there right now, <laughs> but that is not going to be something they're going to be willing to do. Um, if they were, it, it's not going to probably be for you. <laughs> and, uh, and it's not, you know, it would be corruption. So just you're not going to get any headway with that. They're going to probably be offended, maybe, um, or laugh about it behind the scenes. They even say in their letter, I believe when you first file for a congressional inquiry, which is what it's called. And by the way, usually you can find the link to that at their 
sometimes they have a campaign site. It wouldn't be that one. Probably it would be their official in office webpage. And it used to be very simple and maybe it still is. I recently had to do one for somebody and I had to really struggle to find the link because normally there's a link off of the main menu that runs along the top. And when you, you know, for the people or something, and when you click on it, one of the options is help with a federal agency. Boom. Couldn't be more clear than that. That wasn't where this one was. It took me a while to find it. Um, and this was a Pennsylvania congressperson. So uh, not really appreciated because it, that gives me the idea that they don't really want to have to do this, um, which tells me that they don't care a lot about their constituents. So that's a little problem. But separately and aside, your congressperson is to help get the agency moving if they're stuck. It is not to try to get them to influence a fact finder as to your disability, okay? It's not gonna go well if you do it. So I wouldn't recommend. I'll talk to you later, bye. Hey, so if the subject matter of the video you just listened to is of interest and you want more on it, stay tuned. Here's another one about the same topic, but a little bit different by now. Hey guys, you know how we've talked in the past about what you what you need to do or what you can do if your case is getting really held up by the SSA, not so much when it's in the medical workup stage, but when you're when you're at some glitch where there is nothing to be done except some internal behind the scenes things. There's no determinations to be made, no discretion to be had. Um, so internal workings have somehow gotten stalled. It could be you've won your case and you haven't been paid in months. You know, the payment just hasn't started to go through. And it's not like they're asking you for more information and you're responding and there's something going on. So anyway, I was doing this, <clears throat> granted it was pro bono, um, for a particular reason. And the person, there was, there was multifactorial, but that's not really the, the main issue. The person, but I will say this in a nutshell, the person had an outstanding disability claim, um, but that it was taking so long that now the person was going to lose her home. So it, it, it desperate straits, not only taxes, I think, on the property, but um, part of the property is rented. So the landlord was obviously, you know, going to have to at some point pull the trigger on an eviction. So things are not good. Um, she reached out to me. I think it was, it might have been the landlord <laughs> that sent her my way, but um, reached out to me wanting to know if there was anything that could be done. And the the interesting thing was here, the person is is old enough to file for early retirement. And we have videos on the pros and cons of filing for retirement early, but we've also noted that when you are in the middle of a disability claim and you happen to be 62 or older, you could file for early early retirement should you need to, um, you know, if your finances dictate or for whatever other reason. Uh, it just means that there would be less back benefits when you prevail obviously on your disability, but you would get the difference between the disability and the early retirement for any month you'd be due the disability retroactively should you prevail on that. But in the meantime, you're feeding yourself because you have early retirement. Okay, so according to this person, multiple phone calls to the, to the particular SSA office, um, which is irrelevant here because this could happen anywhere, and she was told she couldn't file. Well, she was told multiple things. You know, things always get very inconsistent. One of them sounded like she had prevailed on her disability and she's getting a hold of in payment. But then there would have been a letter. So I don't know about that. And someone else said she, that you can't file for early retirement when you have a disability claim. So not true. Um, we do them all the time. Uh, so anyway, let we, we had a joint, a three-way phone call with the field office last Friday, Friday, I think it was. And we decided if there was no word back, it might've been Thursday, don't hold me to it. If there was no word back by end of day Monday, that we would confer and let's do a congressional inquiry. So this is about that. 
I do a little meandering. The site isn't really prepared very well, I have to say. No offense to the congressperson in question. Um, but eventually we found the place where you could ask for help. It used to be, you'd see a link. It seemed like the same on all the sites. It said help with a federal agency. It was right off of a, you know, you know, the part that would be for, for us to look at, you know, constituents help with a federal agency, but there was none of that. So we eventually found it and I filled out the, with her, the, Thing and sent it in her behalf and told them that I was, you know, typing it up for her and helping her since she doesn't really have the wherewithal to do that. And I will say I'm very pleasantly pleased. We And I gave him a little bit of the rundown in the forum and got a response back today. Today is Wednesday, April 17th. So that was very expeditious. Now I will say we picked the congressperson because there's a few you can pick from, right? There's two senators and then you have a, a representative. We picked one of the ones that were coming up for ah, re-election in fall of 2024, as opposed to the one that doesn't get called until 2028. Um, I have no idea if it makes a difference, but figured it couldn't hurt. And I did get an email back from that office for the uh, cons from the constituent advocate. And it, you know, it's a the standard email you get when you do reach out to them if they're going to email you back. So I wanted to, and of course, they're all written in a different way, I'm sure, different senators and congressmen and representatives. But um, I just wanted to give it a rundown for you. Obviously, they thank you for reaching out to so-and-so's office regarding your client's case. And if it was you without an attorney, and you could do this, you don't need me to do this for you, this whole thing we're talking about. Um, uh, our office would be happy to reach out to the U.S. Social Security Administration on behalf of... Um, Mary Doe's behalf, I'm making up a name. Although our office cannot guarantee a particular outcome, point well taken, I want you to know that we'll do our best to help Mary Doe receive a fair and timely response. And that is the gist of it. We reach out to them when there's been a cog in the wheel, not because we don't like a, a decision or a determination, because that's not the purview of Congress to interfere with the justice of a case, whether we agree with the justice or not. Only if there is, in this particular agency, a cog in the wheel, something something to that nature, something objective. Um, they then go on to say, to begin the process under the provisions of the Privacy Act, blah, 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 blah. Got to sign, ha have her sign a release um, when making an inquiry on behalf of a constituent. That would agree. Normally, that's on other congresspeople's sites. So if any congresspeople are paying attention, you should have your release right on your site. No one should have to reach out for it. And now we're making this... A whole other, a whole other thing. If that release was on there, which other other Congress people I've done this with before, um, not often, every few years, have it on there, and that's that's a little more expeditious. If it was up there, we didn't find it. And granted, I sc scouted around for maybe ten minutes, no more. But I'm not going to do it more, and neither are other people. We're going to assume it's not there if it's not readily findable. Okay, the attached privacy release form must be signed by Mary Doe and returned to our office as soon as possible whether by mail or by email. I like the fact that it can be emailed because snail mail around here is once we receive the release and any supporting documents, we can begin to work on a case. If she wishes for you to receive information on our case, she must list you on page two as an authorized party that our office can speak to, which I'm sure she'll do. Please do not send this form to any other office as that will result in an un unnecessary delay. Um, and they all go on to say, if the case involves medical or healthcare information, our office may ask you to complete a release specifically authorizing access to medical information necessary to resolve your case. That's obviously not relevant here. And then in actual numbered format, please remember that the law and rules of the United States of our, the United States Senate, our office cannot, one, force an agency to expedite your case or to act in your favor. I get that. And I do know that people, lay people, always good and they're asking for help to get it expedited like leapfrog up ahead of other people they can't do that but i do know that they reach out when you do when you do reach out to them and ask for that but here they're just saying which is obvious they can't force an agency okay number two offer legal advice or recommended attorney that's good 
Three, get involved in matters under the jurisdiction of any court or legal entity. Good. Four, intervene in matters under the jurisdiction of a school district, your local government, or the state government. Well, that's good. Um, I know they all say that. Uh, and in this this avenue, obviously, that would be relevant. And it's never that's not even part of this issue. Um, but it is funny that they say that because goodness knows we know how people poke their fingers in and do favors for people all the time. But anyway, I just wanted to let you know what that email says, said. And in the in the actual form, it's a they it makes sure of some of these things and make sure that you're not um involved in any court matter with this. Um, I know they also asked about if you'd reached out to any other Congress people. I think they don't want to be both working on the same matter. And can you imagine, you know, you might if you get don't get help from one, I could see you might go to another, but you would say, like, well, I reached out to so and so, but that office never reached back out to me. Um, but obviously they don't want to. Congress people working on the same, you know, I don't want to work on something someone, somebody else is working on either. Okay, so again, the congressional inquiry, the request you could make to any of your Congress people, of which you should have at least three, um, it's really helpful. They got back to us very expeditiously, I'd say, really within 20, well, yeah, within one business day, because I think I sent that thing in after four o'clock on Monday, I believe. So not bad, guys, Congress, um, Mr. Congressman, I'll say you that. Um, that was that was relatively expeditious. That's that's what I would expect, because that is what that team is for. So it's not him, obviously, taking time out, out of his day. But I was glad to see it happen because sometimes it does take a week. So they're pretty on the ball. All right. Congressional inquiries. Don't leave home without them if you need them. And only for getting a cog removed from the wheel. Don't ask them to try to affect your case. It's not going to work and nor should it. Okay. Bye, guys.